Hey everyone, today I'm going to make six clay soaps and I'm going to test out the Fast Melt 3L. This is my first unboxing video. I was so super excited to be asked to review this. This was a gift from two auto tools. Thank you very much. And I wanted to see, I wasn't positive what I could do with it, but I wanted to see. I was a little weirded out by the box being partially empty um, and a little concerned that maybe the uh, melter had gotten shaken up a little bit in transport, although I will say the outer box was really sturdy. So there's um, on the screen, you'll see all of the info that you need if you are interested in looking for one for yourself. I will also put links in my description box to this particular melter and um, and anything else that is that I can that I'm using. Um, so I'm going to be opening this up and I, like I said I really was a little concerned until I got to this part. It's packed extremely well. It was um, it was not heavy. Mr. Soaps and such had to come help because it was just packed in there so tightly. It wasn't going to go anywhere in shipping. It wasn't going to be harmed. And it wasn't. It was in great shape. So as you see, it comes with the melter as usual. Sorry, I'm always interrupting myself and that's just me. As usual, um, I'm not going to be reading most of the things on the screen. I might comment on them. But I'm going to try to say the other things that you're not going to see on the screen because I can't type everything. So you're far better off listening and watching. Um, just my opinion. But um, yeah, there will be some things left out. I had read somewhere in one of the reviews that the handle was difficult to turn, the spout handle. And that just is not my, um, is not my experience with it. Um, you know, don't, don't buy it for the mold. <laughs> the mold's not the best. However, I'm pretty sure I got a, a decent little square out of it. I didn't use the mold except to hold my extra because I did use a little bit extra. This particular melter, and they come in various sizes. Um, this is the smaller one and it holds You'll see coming up, it holds like four, or I maybe I already put it up there, 4.4 pounds. I was going to make a loaf soap, and so I only used three pounds, which is a little more than I need, because I always like to get a little more than I need. Any turning of that lid that looks shaky is my really bad coordination with putting lids on. That's just a thing for me. It's really easy to do. Um... Trust me. And while this thing is lightweight, it doesn't feel flimsy at all. Um, I was I was really quite pleased. Um, so you see me putting the clays. I'm listing the clays I'm using in the six clay soap. It is a shave soap from Wholesale Supplies Plus, Crafter's Choice. And if you've never used this soap, it's shave and shampoo is the full name of it. If you've ever used this soap, um, well, you may know. If you haven't, just look at the ingredients. Go to Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'm not sponsored by them at all. Um, <clears throat> this is my first sponsorship of any kind, and it really is just a free gift. I'm not being paid to say anything specific. I was just being, I was gifted it and asked to review. So all of my answers and responses and reactions to this are completely honest. And um, of course I forwarded this. It didn't melt that quick. You know I'm speeding things up so you don't have to sit and watch soap melt. Um, it melted quite fast. This was my biggest concern with this is the temperature. Um, it it goes pretty high, 180, something like that. Um, it, uh, yeah, I, I, I double point this out. The thing, the things, the parts you see me touching, they're not hot. The handle's a little warm where the plastic is. Just don't touch the metal. That's hot. That is a given for any kind of melter you use. You can't touch the metal <laughs> that is linked to or, you know, connected to the metal on the inside that's very hot. It's intended to be hot. That spout is heated intentionally to keep your spout clear, to have it pour easily. It poured very easily. It cleaned very easily. Um, yeah, I was really pleased with, with the functionality of this, 
um, of this melter. It isn't really made for low melt soap. Um, a, a larger majority of the soap bases have a higher melting point. And so I, I believe that's what it was made with that in mind. Um, so I was worried that it was going to really mess up my soap. But um, it did go to 180, as you saw. What happened, I don't know if you caught it um, when you saw me see that uh, number, <laughs> that, that temperature. I, I just turned it off. Um, I think if uh, on my next batch of something I'm going to try that's a lower melting point one like this if I and I will try it again with um, different soap bases um, is that um, I, I'll probably turn it off sooner before you know well before it's melted I just it was faster than I anticipated so um, we'll see what happens with that when I turned it off it did stay warm enough to keep using for quite some time one of the instructions, and please read the instructions for any type of melter or something like this that you purchase. Um, they recommend that you use it up pretty quickly. Uh, and that's probably because it's heating to such high temperatures and you don't want to leave your soap at a high temperature for long. Um, I think I saved myself by turning it off sooner than than is anticipated and sooner than um, than is kind of recommended for the amount of soap base I used um, because the soap came out beautiful and you'll see in the end here I want to point out real quickly what I'm doing because I didn't really post not post I didn't really put the text of this up there I started off with the wrong numbers in my head because this is what I do especially stressful times of year, my brain shuts down and I had it originally planned to do more and try to make more at once. And when I cut that back, I didn't cut back the amount of clay I wanted to use in each little bit. So I used too much. I put in basically two, I'm going to say teaspoons, but I think my little spoon is not quite a, a teaspoon, my little measuring spoon. I think it's like three fourths. I put two of those in each thing and really one would have sufficed. The first um, one kind of looked like paint peeling and they all sort of do. I'm, I'm pushing boundaries with the amount of clay because um, I wanted to. <laughs> um, this is a test. It's an experiment. I maybe shouldn't have done it because it could have been part of the reason could have been that the soap was too hot. But honestly, it's functional soap. Um, more than functional uh, so it, it didn't seem to affect its use as a soap I'll, I'll get more into that later but um, I really think it's the too much clay that made um, made these a little more difficult to peel up plus in all honesty I was a little impatient because I was worried about not leaving that soap in there too long I was kind of rushing myself and um, I feel like I pulled these up a little too fast because the last one, which for some reason the camera um, didn't get, it cuts out every once in a while. It only stays on with the battery pack for a certain amount of time and then it, you have to restart it. And um, or maybe if it's with the plug in, I don't know. Either way, it, it you have to restart it every so often. And so every once in a while, there's a little moment cut out and it happened to be when I was peeling up the green sea clay and which was the easiest to peel up and I think that may have been because it was cooling off quicker you know it was more cooled than the others because I had already turned the soap off but it also may have been because I left it for a lot longer before trying to peel it up which I should have done with all of these um so, I mean, learn from my mistakes. Do what you know is right and you know what works for you in the past. Um, this, I was uh, basically, I'm, as you, if you know me, you know that I have a technique I created a long time back called, uh, the, I, well, it's recently named. <laughs> I've used it forever. But we called it the chiffon technique because I was um, imitating a resin look that is a chiffon look. And... Um, I've made, this is the third or fourth soap I've made on, this is the third soap I've made a video on. I've made 
several other soaps using this technique. But this is the first one, uh, first one. This is the third one I've done of this technique. Um, so it's just another take on the chiffon rainbow and the chiffon bonfire that you may have seen me recently post. Um, that's the one that kind of looks like fire, kind of looks like flowers. It's kind of questionable. Depends on who's looking at it. Um, but I wanted to use the shaving base, um, even though it had a lower melting point, because I, I have plenty of it. I was not about to test something with my um, premium crystal clear, which is m my go-to soap for my art soaps. Um, because it's really scarce right now. And what I have, I had to pay quite a bit for. It's one that's back ordered. It's not, it's not available on Wholesale Supplies Plus, which is the company that makes the Crafter's Choice products. And so I just wasn't willing to chance it. Um, and I have um, a little bit of an excess of the shaving soap. It's not excess of what I'll use. It's just I have plenty. So, um, so I was using that. And I was so thrilled that I did because um, it's just a beautiful soap base. Uh, you always think of it for shaving and shampoo because that's what it's called. But honestly, um, it's great on your skin. I mean, most of the time things that are feel good on your hair are also, uh, you know, a lot of those are good for your skin. Um, yeah, this is a particularly messy video. But I, I really wanted to pay more attention to what I was doing with this melter than anything. And so um, the one thing I'll say when I opened it, because I, I can't keep up my talking to the video because that's my brain. But um, back when I was stirring, when I opened and stirred it, a couple little things. First, that spoon came with it, which is nice. Um, you do want a long utensil like that. You don't want to get chance like splashing that really hot soap up onto you it's not safe um and um I did want to say to watch if you use this it because it is melting at such a high temperature if you stir it in between um it might stick to the heating element to the to the bottom floor of the melter a little bit so I wouldn't you know don't jam it just stir what you can and then close it and let it go, you know, go back to work. Um, or at that point, what I should have done where at, with as much that was, uh, with as much of the soap that was as melted as it was when I opened to stir, I should have turned it off at that point. Um, but seriously, no harm, no foul on this one. It did not mess up my soap. Um, it may have had to make me work a little bit differently. And that's something else I'll talk about in the full review process at the end I'm going to kind of mention what I feel are the benefits um, and the the things I might change about it or things that might make me um, not use it for everything and that's the thing I will use this I will use this for several things I have all kinds of projects in mind for this melter um, it's uh, uh, when I have an industrial strength big big melter Okay, I have one that that uh, I, my dad helped me purchase. <laughs> yeah, I'm over 50 and still needing help from my dad. Um, but he helped me purchase when I was moving to some, uh, I kind of had an opportunity to move to some wholesale accounts, but it was a time restricted thing. I had to move kind of quickly and then it ended up a year later. I'm not even um, doing these accounts, uh, but... I do have for times that I'm making large amounts, which still happens. Um, I have an industrial strength, big old soap melter, not cheap. Um, it's not something you want to purchase if you're just making a hobby or just selling a few here and there. It's, it's honestly something for wholesale accounts and, and people, um, making, uh, really large, large amounts at once. So, um, and I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. And it's temperature controlled. Like you can control the temperature of it. It has a, a window that you can set it at. And it's it's fantastic. But I'm not going to compare it to this one because it's not even in the same kind of category. This is a hobby, hobbyist or small business um, type of thing. And it's really convenient for me because I don't soap typically in the room where where my industrial strength 
one is. Um, that one's it's too it's too big to move. Um, for me, I have a bad back, <laughs> bad neck. Um, it it would be really not at all um, convenient to move it back and forth. And right now, where I am soaping, I also teach voice lessons, so <laughs> everything goes away. <laughs> so I have to be kind of mobile with my soaping area, and um, at least uh, at least the larger equipment has to be mobile like obviously the other things I can I have a little box I transfer things back and forth with too I gather up what fragrances I'm using that kind of stuff um but I can't move that thing back and forth and it's it's like I say mostly for filming purposes but um this little thing is I mean easily easily carried by me there's not I mean not even a um question it, uh, it's like I said, it's very lightweight. It might be, uh, you might consider it when it's full, a little bit top heavy. So be, a, just be aware and have it on a stable surface, which you should anyway. Um, it's obviously something you want to keep away from children and pets like any, <laughs> any soap melter, any heating surface, etc. And of course you don't want kids and pets around your soap anyway. But I just thought I'd mention it just for out of safety reasons because I feel sometimes those little points um, run by us, you know, kind of flip through our head and, and we don't um, particularly... See, that's about the perfect temperature. It's a little hot. I'm going to say it's a little hotter than I would for these. Um, sorry, I'm interrupting myself again. I just looked up and saw the temperature after I poured it. It was it was pretty hot before I poured and I I poured it slow and sprayed it and cooled it off a little but you see it's already melting the clay sheets okay so back to the the safety features um, I feel like it's easy for us to overlook things like that um, and instructions and just okay blah 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 I'm looking at this I know what I'm doing um, and move on and then we complain when they don't work right or you know we're even worse than that, you know, we're upset because we have like a minor tragedy or an injury or something in our house. So I'm just, this is in general, I'm just recommending that you uh, read instructions and follow them. They're there for a reason, the safety guidelines for soap and for um, using um, items like this that heat. Um, obviously, we're not cold. Well, I, I, some of us are cold process soap makers that do all many of of you do both I don't um for many reasons I'm not opposed to it or against it I just can't um but it, it's like you're following those safety so safety rules you would not want to um you know you don't want to touch lie you know better than that right and those um obviously when soapers are new sometimes they're learning those and don't always follow those kinds of rules um, to the letter and that's where injuries happen um, so this I'm just pointing it out I know you none of you are stupid <laughs> you're smart people or you wouldn't be making um, the beautiful soaps that I've seen you make and uh, but I just want to point out to be very aware to read through all of the instructions for this and for any other um, melter of any kind or hot um, hot uh, type of heating type of equipment, anything like that, like your, um, maybe your heat gun for your um, shrink wrap, etc. So just to keep that in mind, I'll stop lecturing you on that and get back to this soap. As you saw, um, they were melting a little as they went in, which I kind of anticipated. One of the reasons I like to do soaps that are kind of abstract art is because that's, it's abstract art. It gives me more wiggle room um, for the designs to not be perfect. Um, I do have some soaps I make that, that have to have a little bit more precision. But one of the reasons I wanted to test this one is because I was pretty sure I could get a, a good looking soap out of it, even if the soap was a little hotter than I normally pour at. The other reason those little sheets, clay sheets are melting is because they have an overabundance of clay in them. Um, even when I removed, I went to each of those little cups after the first one and removed um, about half of what was there. So that's all on me. And um, and I'm not sad I did it because 
I got a really gorgeous soap that feels great on my skin. It has a really good lather. It's a hard bar. It's, um, it's set up beautifully. Um, there's no, there's no, um, glycerin do. There's nothing. It feels like, almost feels like a, um, like, you know, what, what you think of when you think of the low glycerin, the low sweat types of soap or some of the detergent free soaps are that way. Some of, uh, similar to cold process, maybe after it's been cured. Um, I, I stole one of these for myself. I took one of these bars. I could not resist it. First of all, I wanted to prove to myself that it was as nice of a bar as it looked because it did. It, like I said, it set up really hard and it, um, it just, it would smell good <laughs> and it, and it looked good and, um, had, it just had a really nice, um, weight to it. It's, it's, uh, so I, I just had to, I had to try it and I wanted to make sure that the lather was good and it was, <laughs> it's gorgeous lather. Um, it starts off big bubble and then the more you, um, lather with it because it is a shave soap, it does get a bit foamy. Um, foamy lather. It feels great on your skin. I can't tell you what it does for your skin or what you might think it might do for your skin because it's soap and it cleans and that's all we can say. Um, but anybody who's used clay soaps, um, you, you might know. <laughs> you might know that if nothing else, it gives you, uh, it gives a slickness to uh, soap. Uh, they call it slip and that is for helping to shave with but uh spoiler spoiler alert <laughs> um it also feels great on your skin and it also it cleans very thoroughly but leaves does not dry my skin at all and i have really sensitive skin that dries out pretty easily um one of the reasons i prefer glycerin soap to any others i've used is that higher glycerin content um is great for my skin um so i'm at the end of the pour here and as I'm getting ready to go to the cut, oh, real quick little tip here. The little thing at the end, uh, that's, I stick that under the end if it's not even, if it's not level. I do have a level and have to lay, level my table every time and I'm not always so perfect about it. Um, but, oh, there, look how clean, that's after I cleaned it. And all I did is follow the instructions which are so simple um, after you turn it off by the way, that where that spout handle is, you have to make sure it's on or off, completely on or completely off. And at times you need it to be. When you put the soap in, you don't turn it on. You don't turn on the melter until you know um, that the soap is in it and the handle is at off. Then you heat it. Then you turn the handle on and you turn it back off all the way. It's the same for cleaning the cleaning process. When you've drained out all of the soap as much as we'll go through the spout, which was pretty much all of it, basically just left a little bit of a film. Um, then you make sure the handle's off because it's going to be on from draining and you won't see anything dripping. So you have to remember to turn it off and then you pour in some water, some hot water and um, you don't have to fill it. You just, they say pour a cup. I did more because um, I wanted to make sure I got the sides really well. Um, I think it was probably, it was like a little small tumbler. So it was probably more like two cups worth. Um, I don't know. Um, but, um, and you just, you, I used the spoon as they kind of, uh, described in the instructions and just scraped along the edges a little bit lightly to make sure everything was off, stirred it a little bit. Um, I, uh, closed it up. I think I turned it on for a few minutes to heat it to make sure it was, you know, heated and going through, uh, uh, catching anything that maybe, uh, was still stuck to it. And, uh, and I just mean like two or three minutes. I don't mean like I walked away for a long time or something. And, um, and then I turned it off and I opened the spout and it all poured out. <laughs> I, you know, um, uh, and emptied that and I emptied it until it was totally gone. When it was empty and then cool, I left the lid off and allowed it to cool completely. I came back in and just wiped it with a paper towel. Um, and it was, it was simple. It was really simple to clean. I hate things that are complicated to clean. Um, so as you see, you've seen me doing the cuts here. I'm in love with this soap. I love the way it came out. 
Um, it the the weirdness of me kind of scraping those up in it. They were harder to scrape because I used too much clay, and I probably made a couple of them a little thinner than I normally do. Um, but they kind of gave that little bit of a curly look, I believe, to some of those. I that's one of the things with the chiffon technique. You can control a little bit about the thickness and the the shape of of those and uh, you see I rip them a lot and I'm doing that when I'm ripping them I'm trying to create edges that aren't too clean because I didn't want the edges to look clean um, obviously I'm sizing them too but I don't cut it with a knife on purpose I'm, I'm ripping it because I want nice um, organic looking edges so yeah I did a little clap this is how much you don't see me do that very often I was so happy with this soap it's not sticky it's not tacky it's um it's beautiful. So, um, so here's my basic review. I said to turn on the audio because I know some people um, don't necessarily listen. They're watching because maybe they're somewhere where they can't. Um, and I only say that because <laughs> there are <laughs> there are times you ask questions that have been answered. So I'm kind of assuming that you are watching with the sound off. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with with doing that. You just may may miss some info. So the the gist of it is. This is great for high melt soaps. I'm going to try this with a shampoo base I use that is has a higher melt. It's also from Stevenson's, the, the Cindapore. I'm going to try it with that. But first I'm going to try it with some other low melt soaps and then uh, another, a different kind of Stevenson's I have that has a higher melting point. I'm going to, I'm going to play with that because I think it can be altered enough to use for the lower melting point. I wouldn't use it for everything. It's not going to get rid of my microwave because I have some that are quite intricate and take too long. And you don't want to leave the soap in that long. So I feel like I'm going to be using both um, depending on what I'm doing. It is definitely a great tool. It was um, way higher quality, quality than I thought it would be. Um, it, as with anything, read your instructions. Because I, it, when I see people, I always go and look at the reviews and the questions and complaints etc and um, a lot of the times you can read them and you're you know in your head you're like that's that's user error <laughs> they didn't read the instructions and I mean that's just who we are we're we're in a world where we're moving fast and we don't always have the time or take the time to thoroughly think through and look at something I hyper focus I overthink everything so I'm reading instructions like three times that's just who I am and so I recommend when you're working with something new like this that you do the same really do your research on it and think through your melting point of your soap you can't ignore that in in um, well in any melter really you can't ignore it as a soaper it you have to get used to and know what the melting points are of your different bases and um, like I said I can't wait to try some of the higher melt bases that I have in these although I will still be using my lower melt ones as well either in the microwave or in this if it's a quick soap and it's something I can do fast and I don't have a 8,000 little embeds to do or something so um, anyway I'm hoping that you love these soaps as much as I do I just thrilled with them they definitely make great Rorschach tests ink um, ink blot tests if you don't know that name or that term um, it's like looking at the clouds in the sky <laughs> trying to pull out the pictures um, there are so many pictures in these soaps as you'll see I'm gonna put them together in some of the pics at the end so you can kind of do your own Rorschach tests and hire your own therapist to analyze your results because <laughs> I'm not um, I'm not qualified to do that but um, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you'll give this a try if it is something that suits your hobby, your soap habits, your soap um, brand that you use. And um, I, I really do think it can be a helpful tool. Um, like I said, I'm looking forward to using it again. And as I do, I will make notes on these things. I will probably... Um, film them more so you can also see if the little tweaks like turning it off early and things like that that can maybe help you to be more efficient with how to use it properly um, I could not have been happier 
with the way these soaps came out. I honestly, I, I did not expect um, to get such a great result. I thought they would melt a little too much. And they melted a little, but I really like the look. It just kind of colors the background just a little. And it didn't muddy, didn't all turn brown. Um, so I, I hope there's something that can be gained both in soap techniques and in just your thoughts on what tools you're using and what might be easier for you. I will say it was really fast melting. It, it, it melted, I don't know, it melted three pounds in no time at all. All I did bet between the time I started and turned that on and the time you saw me stir it the first time was put little spoons of clay in each cup. That's, that's all I did. I didn't do anything else. Um, so that being said, that was not a lot of time, even though you, you know, there's some speed in here a little bit. It's sped up a little bit. So you don't have to like watch me go painstakingly slow with things, but, um, there's it, you know, that, so here's, here's step one of your Rorschach test. Um, I was, I, there's a couple of them I saw a butterfly in, so I wanted to try and see if it did when I put them together. You'll see more in here. Here's my light box picks. If you're here for this long, I thank you so, so much. I am excited to say that I am now a YouTube partner with the first level. So you can leave me a super thanks if you want. That means you pay to have your comment highlighted or you can leave some kind of an animated thing. I'm not sure on all of that, but I was excited to be accepted and excited that I had 3000 watch hours. That's all because of you. I can't thank you enough for your support. And um, please leave me any questions you have in the comments. I'm happy to answer, highlighted or not. Um, make sure you write down your results of your Rorschach test. See what you can find. See what you see. There's some really interesting little shapes in here. And this isn't even all of the pictures I took. I didn't want to bore you with too many. But I hope that you see some great things. I hope you try a soap like this using more clay than you're supposed to because it really can result in a wonderful soap. Um, I kind of think these last ones look like Chinese writing stone. That's my opinion. Okay. Thank you so, so much. And I hope you have an awesome day. Thanks. Bye.